Good evening and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service as we begin the season of Lent together. This year, uh, of course, Ash Wednesday is happening a little bit differently. We're going to be doing the service in our homes rather than gathered here at the church. And usually we use ashes that are made from last year's palm leaves. Well, I understand that that's kind of impractical this year. So I'm going to invite you to do something different in order to fully participate in this year's Ash Wednesday service. I'd like for you to get a scoop of dirt just from around your yard somewhere. My, the scoop I've got has got a little bit of uh, pine mulch in it and some, and some soil. And this is what we're going to use a little bit later on during the service in order to impose the ashes. What is it that we say? From dust we came and to dust we shall return. And so we're going to use the dust of the earth in order to impose the ashes today. So if you need to do that, then hit pause on the video for just a minute. Go get, go get some dirt from around your house and then come back and join us for the rest of the service. Let us go to God in prayer. Most holy God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth you have formed us and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson today comes from the prophet Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord? and bow myself before God on high. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Traditionally, the portions of Matthew chapter 6 that are read on Ash Wednesday uh, for the Ash Wednesday service precede what we're reading this evening. Those are those passages that say, don't behave like the hypocrites do. Don't sound your trumpet before you when you bring your offering. Don't pray loudly or for a long time to make yourself look holy. Don't make a show about practicing your spiritual disciplines like fasting. But we don't do those things, do we? We know that we are to be more modest and humble than that. We know that authentic Christian living isn't about show. Our portion of scripture this evening as we begin our spiritual journey of Lent 2021, it's a little more appropriate for our present circumstances. It can't be brushed off as quickly as it is another call to repent, to change our ways, to go in a new direction. But maybe we never looked at it that way before. So I invite you, to hear it with a self-examining heart and to hear the good news for you that God cares for you. It is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. Don't they sow seed or harvest? They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies of the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon, in all of his splendor, wasn't dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat, or what are we going to drink, or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The past 12 months certainly have given us lots to worry about, haven't they? Race relations, homelessness, human trafficking, 
immigration, LGBT issues, COVID-19, politics, and the election, and the economy, and just so much. For many, these were not just social issues, but very personal experiences. Loved ones were afflicted. Our brothers and sisters in faith from this church family were affected. There were reasons to say we were worried. I want to invite you to step back just for a moment and breathe deeply. Let's reflect on Jesus' instruction to not worry. Is worry ever a sin? Is it something to give up during Lent? I suggest to you that worry inspire, that inspires us to fix something is good. But crippling worry, obsession, anxiety-producing worry is not. It is unhealthy and it interferes with our spiritual well-being. This was the year when people may have been rebuffed by your expression of concern. If you said your thoughts and prayers were being sent to them, for example. This was the year when many became afraid to say anything for fear or worry of offending someone else. This was the year of worry about so many things. Maybe this sounds like you, it does me too. Maybe there were times you should not have spoken or posted or sent an email or a letter. Maybe there were times you wish you had spoken up but didn't. Maybe you were silenced or maybe you silenced someone else. This whole seething mess of social interaction ran off the rails this year. I suggest to you that we have all become so filled with unhealthy, spirit-wounding worry that we all need to repent. We need to let go of it. Trust God. Don't find comfort in worry. We need to pray for ourselves and for others and ask God's forgiveness. Ask God to forgive us for making wrong choices and for being so wrapped up in struggles that we have ceased to walk in the light of Christ. Ask for forgiveness for the ways we let worry and anxiety and, yes, sometimes even hypocrisy rule our lives. If we Christians are to be about the business of kingdom building, we need to turn our society into a place of kindness. We need to turn away from sharp words and look for ways to heal, to comfort, to pray, to encourage. But also we need to learn kindness. We need to trust God in ways and times that we have failed to do so. We need to learn to trust each other again, especially those that don't think or believe the same way that we do. <clears throat> we really need to learn to love others with the kind of love that Jesus called us to have not sweetheart love like we celebrated on Valentine's Day, but agape love. Intentional, sacrificial, generous, and grace-filled love that controls how we treat others with justice and encouragement and dispels their worries. You see, sometimes we don't only worry ourselves, but we cause others to also worry but we can change that. And if we change it, we can cause a little at a time that arc of social interaction to change too. It's good news. If God provides for birds and God provides for the lilies of the field, God will take care of you too. 
Do you remember Paul's letter to um, the church in Corinth? He told those new Christians that love is kind. Love is patient. Love hopes all things. Now, how can we be kind, patient, and hopeful if we're worrying all the time or causing others to worry? Bishop Michael Curry of the Episcopal Church wrote in his book, Love is the Way, the love we need to discover inside ourselves is a fierce love. It's action and follow through and it has extraordinary power. Love is a commitment to seek the good and to work for the good and the welfare of others. It calls us to sacrifice, not because doing so feels good or looks good, but because it's the right thing to do. When we love others and seek their welfare and work on behalf of justice, our focus shifts from worry to working. Our values shift from suspicion and mistrust to hope and vision. If we allow Christ to work in us during these weeks of Lent, we can learn to overcome the sin of worry and be transformed into people of vision and power. And we are filled with the love and grace of God. We can become able to love fiercely in our homes, in our communities, and in our country. If we allow Christ to set us free from worry, we can embrace the hope he gives us to turn others to his light. If we ask Christ to transform our ashes, our dust of the earth, our failures, our grief, our worry, into justice that rolls down like a fountain, then we can do justice, we can embrace love, and we can walk humbly with our God. Friends, all of us have stories from this past year of loved ones who are no longer here or stories of those who have struggled so greatly or stories of people you care about very much but your relationship with them hit rocky ground or stories of lost jobs and financial struggle in so many hard places. This year, at this time, Give those over to God. Look for the place of light and hope. Look for the ways you can learn through them as we begin a holy Lent and seek God's teachings for us. Hear the good news. Humanity is loved and important to God. We can trust in his providential care. We will not be snatched from his hand, and we can help each other. I invite you now to hear the historical invitation to observe a holy Lent. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection with great devotion, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there would be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts or new believers to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the life of the church. In this way, the holy congregation was the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need for all of us to share to renew our own faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. 
to make a right beginning and as a sign of our mortal nature, I invite you to see the ashes or the dust of the earth before you. Whether you make a sign on your forehead or sprinkle ashes on your head or just feel the dust of the earth in your fingers, begin this holy time. Amen. Let us pray over our ashes, our dust, our holy and sacred ground. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May I remember that I came from dust, and to dust I will return. May I repent and believe in the gospel. I invite you to impose ashes on yourself or on one another. If you need to pause the video for just a moment in order to do so, that is fine. And hear again these words. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. May we once again go to God in prayer. May the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that instead we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, God is waiting for you to come to him to reflect during this season of Lent. So go in peace and in prayer. In our Savior's name, amen.